Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Phil, and today is Sunday, the 11th of June, 2023. This is my only stream of the day because we got a weird day today. Not really weird, but, you know, half-day streaming schedule for uh, good reasons. My ghost is off, which is absolutely horrible. Let me get the ghost on here. Welcome to the show. We've got a heck of a lot going on right now. Like, literally, as I stream, um, we've got an Xbox showcase going on. I believe they have begun the Starfield presentation, which they claimed would be 45 minutes long. Um, you might say, why are they doing such a long presentation for one game? Well, quite frankly, because it really does kind of feel like the make-or-break game for both Bethesda and Microsoft right now. Um, if you have looking at the track record of what's been going on, with uh, these Microsoft games coming out of Microsoft Game Studios recently, uh, they have not been crowd pleasers. Let's put it that way. And even all the information that we've gotten regarding Starfield up to this point, I don't believe has been much to blow your socks off. So I think today they're doing the ginormous presentation to try to win over the audience and say, hey, listen, no, this game really will be good, okay? Um... So you might say, might say, why am I not watching all of this right now? Well, I actually did watch some already. As I was uh, doing my, my morning business and having my breakfast with my, my family, I was watching some of the Xbox event. Um, I really honestly don't have much good to say about it. Uh, it kind of felt very similar to the PlayStation event where it was kind of like, here's a bunch of games, but they all kind of fall into established archetypes and or genres that you already know. Um, it didn't really look like much did anything in the realm of innovation or stepping outside the box but interestingly enough something that that kept kind of resonating with me as i was watching this presentation so it's like oh look a first person exploration game where you're a silent protagonist just trying to figure out what's going on oh look a third person action game where everything is very anime-esque oh look another third person action game where you're fighting Japanese demons and it looks like feudal Japan I'm thinking in my head whoa long Neo already played that one oh Hi-Fi Rush already played that one uh Subnautica already played that one you know as I'm going through these I'm just like <laughs> hitting upon every game that we've already played in the last five years that is basically incredibly similar to all these games that they're showing but then the one thing that's resonating with me as I'm watching is at the end of every one, they would say, it's on Game Pass. And I'd be like, oh, you know, pretty much every game that they're showing at the Xbox show is on Game Pass. And some people have used that as a positive, and some people have used that over the years as a negative. Um, for me, the way I see it is when a game's on Game Pass, right... That means that is a game that you have opportunity to play and try out, almost like a demo or a trial or a free trial, um, with no risk. Because if you're already uh, in a situation 
where you have a Game Pass membership, which I do. You know, I'm going to keep the Game Pass membership because it gives me the online play I want for games such as Street Fighter VI. <clears throat> it's definitely given me lots of value over the last few years. I've been playing games like Oblivion and stuff. You know, I'm going to keep that Game Pass Ultimate uh, going. But if these games are free on Game Pass, right, and there's no money investment to buy them, to try them, then... It's kind of like, I, I don't really have much to complain about, right? And that's kind of weird because I'm someone who's been around for 15 years watching these conferences, watching these events, criticizing them and giving you my opinion. And it's like, as much as I can give you my honest opinion, at the end of the day, if the game is free, because it's a subscription you already have, then it's kind of like, I guess if it sucks, it sucks. But if it doesn't, you have the chance to try it with no risk. So it kind of does, for me, soften the whole situation. But for a lot of people, they actually use this as a negative justification. Um, and they say things such as, oh, um, you know, because it's a Game Pass game, it's subpar. You see, because it's on Game Pass and no one has to buy it outright, that gives it the excuse to not be as good as a full-fledged game you have to buy. I've even heard, you know, defenders of Sony games and, and such say, oh, you see... Because it's Game Pass, that means that you know those games are worse. You want to have to buy the game to put confidence in it. And that's going to be sure that you're getting a quality game. Those Game Pass games are always designed to be subpar because they know they're not making a lot of money on them. I don't know. That that sounds ridiculous to me. Um, I don't know if I believe that. But I've seen that's what I mean. I've seen it as like both sides of the fence. So it's kind of interesting watching this Xbox event and having people say opposites to the exact same footage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we watch this, it's like, okay, here's the game. What did you think? Oh, it looks great. I can't wait to play it. And I'll just like, oh, it looks like shit. Oh, it's great because it's on Game Pass. Oh, it's shit because it's on Game Pass. Like, whew. We want to talk about a, a split, right? Anyway. um, We'll, we'll talk about it, I'm sure. Today we got a, a good amount of stuff to discuss. All right, first of all, yes, I'm sure you guys are going to want to talk about some of the stuff that's being discussed in this event. The way I'm going to approach it is I'm eventually going to watch it myself and I'm going to do like a recap reactions video that I'm going to put out over on my React channel, DSP React. So that's coming later this week, probably like Tuesday or Wednesday night because I also want to wait for the Capcom and the Ubisoft and the other events to happen tomorrow. And I'll probably do like one video that'll cover a bunch of this stuff cumulatively and give you my, my overall thoughts on it rather than me doing like 10 separate videos or anything like that. <clears throat> um... But all that being said, um, I'm not covering it live. We talked about it the last couple of days, why I'm not covering this live right now. I don't see the added value of doing that. Me doing the live React stuff opens up a lot of issues with copyright, with a lot of issues. My, my, my live React to Summer Game Fest was blocked for almost 24 hours. By the time it went live, thousands of people who wanted to check it out had watched it elsewhere. As of today, I think it may have around 2,000 views. I actually haven't even checked, but I think that a good amount of people actually did go after the fact and watch it, um, which I appreciate, by the way. Thank you to those who waited <clears throat> that long amount of time for it to actually go visible to check it out. That's very nice of you to uh, to actually still give it attention after having it blocked for so dang long. Yeah, it's got about 1,800 views on it right now, and I appreciate that. I really do because um, I did put the effort into it, but at the same time, yeah, it is frustrating doing live reactions to have everything get screwed up so that's why i'm not doing it today you know i'll just do my recap reactions later you'll still get my opinions on all this stuff that's going on and also here's another critical part it won't take away from my gameplay because i need to do gameplay at this point i can't be cutting out of my normal schedule i am already in the midst of three ginormous high profile new releases and being in the midst of three of them it's frustrating because I not, don't feel like I'm playing enough, right? Like Street Fighter Six, <clears throat> I skipped a day. I feel like I'm behind already. Because I skipped one day of playing Street Fighter Six, And that's how it is with big fighting games. You have to be like constantly playing them, practicing them, learning. That's just how it is with these competitive games. But then we've got Zelda, which I hadn't played for a week. And I finally jumped back into it last night. Thankfully, I did make good progress last night. But there's people who are voicing their opinions, feeling like the Zelda playthrough now has kind of been left by the wayside and not really enjoying it. Like last, I actually got a few people who criticized last night's gameplay, saying that, you know, 
it sucks because everyone else has beaten this game already. And now it feels like I'm just basically getting into the groove of, of making progress. And I'm only going to be playing it like two times a week. Well, it might be three. Dep I guess it depends on the week, honestly. Um, and that's a valid criticism, man. That's absolutely positively a valid criticism of the playthrough, which I knew was going to happen, and I was afraid it was going to happen with all these games coming out at once. <clears throat> and then you got Diablo 4, <clears throat> excuse me, which I'm very much enjoying, by the way. I'm really having a good time with Diablo 4 as a chill stream. But it seems like there's a group of people who are criticizing that playthrough, saying, well, Diablo, you should have played on hardcore at a higher world tier level because your way you're playing it, it's too relaxed. And it's not that entertaining. It's like, well, that was the point. I told you guys all along <clears throat> as we were talking about Diablo. I said that Diablo would be a chill playthrough. I knew it. I knew the kind of game it was, that it was meant to be more laid back, chill, grindy gameplay. Yes, the story's there, but it's not necessarily the thing that takes the front stage of the game. It's more about the gameplay loop being addictive and fun, looking for loot, leveling up, getting new abilities, changing your build to be better over time. That's actually where the, the highlight of a Diablo playthrough is. Um, I don't play games for Ultra Challenge. You know that. There are games I do, like if I'm going to play a FromSoft game or whatever, but... Not every playthrough for me has to be a hard or heightened difficulty, ridiculous challenge run. In fact, if it was, I feel like my content would not be nearly as good because I don't have opportunity to really have a good interaction with the audience. You know, playing Street Fighter VI for the last week, I've had almost no opportunity to speak with my audience because i got to focus on the game. So a game like Diablo has become the game to do that, but now there's enough people, oh, that's not good. Now the Diablo playthrough is no good, you know? So it's like you can't please everyone. You know what I'm saying? You just can't. You can't please everyone all the time. And for me, it's hard to juggle all this stuff. It is. It's right now, I'll be honest with you guys, I'm having a good time because the games I'm playing are good. I think Street Fighter VI, Diablo, and Zelda are all really good games. But it's tough when you're juggling three games and everyone wants one and you can't give them what they want all the time. On top of that, in 10 days, or is it 11? It's 11 days, isn't it? In 11 days, we got Final Fantasy 16 coming out. And yes, absolutely, I am playing that one. And here we go again, trying to juggle stuff, and what's going to end up happening is we're going to have even less gameplay. Thank goodness I'm going to basically get another whole week of Street Fighter VI, maybe even a little more, before I have to cut down a little bit on Street Fighter VI to play Final Fantasy. <clears throat> so, we're going to talk about all this. Right? We're going to talk about the schedule and everything. Um, but, yeah, it's tough right now. It is. It's tough to please everyone. Especially when, you know, I'm doing my best to juggle a million games, correct? And they all came out in short term. You know, last month, my, it was a rush to beat Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Final Fantasy V Pixel Remaster, and Oblivion before we hit this month. But as I was playing those, I was also playing Zelda, right? And I really felt like, you know, Zelda was just one game I was focusing on rather than everyone else on the planet was hyper-focused on Zelda and only playing Zelda and making great progress in Zelda and doing well. And here I am flubbing around in the game, trying to figure out the mechanics of the puzzles, getting shocked by lightning, and having a bunch of people basically taking gameplay out of context of the, the entire playthrough to try to make me look like a jackass, you know, on the internet, and making stupid viral memes about it. And it's like, it's like you can't win no matter what you do. If I had skipped Zelda entirely, all I would have gotten were complaints that why did I skip one of the best, highest profile releases of the year? But then I play it, but I can't focus on it because I have to balance a million things. And then I get yelled at, oh, why aren't you learning this mechanic? Why are you playing so shitty in this regard? Why are you complaining about this? It's like, see, you can't have it both ways. You understand? Like, it really can't. And that's the problem. It seems like everyone wants me to be playing these games at some kind of a high level and, and, and doing well. And if not, time to make fun of them. Well, I can't do everything for everyone I can't please every person I can't play every game it's tough right now it really is like I, I'm happy that we have so many good games to play I just wish we didn't have them all at once what happened to the first four or five months of the year I mean just think about it in the first four or five months of 2023 we had Dead Space Remake Hogwarts Legacy Final Fantasy Final Fantasy excuse me Resident Evil 4 Remake right that's all we had for like five months, we had three major games, and that was it. And they weren't even lengthy games. You really think about it. It wasn't like they were insanely long games. I guess you could argue Hogwarts if you did all the side content. But that was it. Where were the good games then? 
that would have been a great time to have more games to balance out, especially these games that are stacking up to be 100-hour playthroughs. Would have been perfect during that time period. But instead, we got to now have everything all at once, which pulls me in a million directions as a variety content creator, and not being able to focus on one game essentially makes it so that I forget stuff. I mean, last night, I'm in the Goron Village in Zelda, right? I'm trying to find a pot to cook food. I can't find it. Now, everyone is like, oh, you ran by it 10 times. Yes, you can see the pot. You want to know why you can see the pot? Because you're not playing Street Fighter VI, Diablo, and Zelda all at the same time. You have one mindset of just playing Zelda. You know what you're looking for. Like, in your mind, you know what the pot looks like, and you know exactly what it is on recognition. For me, I'm playing so much shit at once, I don't even know what the pot looks like anymore. I've forgotten what the cooking pot looks like. So I'm running around town trying to find this shit. I don't know where it is. You know, it is. I feel like I'm scattered right now. I'm scatterbrained with the amount of stuff that I'm doing all at once. And that's what happens is it makes the playthrough quality dip. Back in the day, when I used to play a bunch of new releases at once, how did I do it? Well, I played one game for two, three days and beat it within three days. Now, it was an insanely rushed playthrough. It was skip all the side content, skip all the, me the meaningful stuff on the side, just do the main story, beat the game within two, three days, on to the next. And that allowed me to be hyper-focused. That allowed me to basically get through a game at a rapid pace, not forget shit and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Um, and that was, uh, in some cases, a lot of people loved it and others hated it. I got a lot of people who loved that style of content because I was the guy known for beating games so fast, right? But then there were people who were like, dude, your playthrough suck because you're rushing through. You miss half the content of the game. So over the years, I evolved. I became an interactive streamer. I became someone who plays a game at a lengthy pace, who tries to take in all of the content of a game to give it a better representation in a playthrough. And then what happened? Games became these giant bloated experiences. 100-hour RPGs. There were no 100-hour RPGs 10, 15 years ago when I started on YouTube. It didn't exist. Now it's like every game is aspiring to be that, right? Right? So now I'm supposed to be remembering every little critical thing about every game I play, you know, and then God forbid that something annoys me in a game because, you know, I don't remember a game mechanic from the previous iteration six, seven years ago, and I, I say something about it, and now everyone wants to make fun of me on the internet for it. It's like, you just can't win, right? Really. It used to be you could just play a game, fuck around, say whatever you wanted. It didn't have to be of quality. It could just be fun. Put it out on the internet, people would watch and enjoy it. Now it's like, if you want to make content for the internet, man, you better be doing it in a certain time frame, you better be doing it at a certain difficulty level, you better be doing it in a certain methodology, you better not make a mistake, you better make the game look good at every moment. Don't joke around, don't make any criticisms, don't do nothing, you have to be in this one fucking line of content. If you don't make that, your content's shit, and you're not worth it, and you shouldn't be making content on the internet. Fuck that. All right? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you, fuck that bullshit, try hard, you know, get good mentality nonsense. The world is not about that. Video games are not supposed to be about that. Do you understand? Video games are supposed to be about fun. You understand? Fun. If you're having fun playing a game, it doesn't matter if you're good or bad. It doesn't matter if you beat it in this amount of time or this amount of time. If you do all the content or 10% of the content. As long as you're having fun, that's all that matters when it comes to video games because that's what they're supposed to be. A way for you to get amusement out of life. To escape the realities of your real life and the stresses and all the things that you're doing with or you're dealing with in real life and unplug from that stressful nonsense for a few minutes and jump into a virtual world. It shouldn't be about, oh, I need to play this game, but by the way, it's 100 hours long, so I need to meter my progress, so every night I'm doing exactly this, and I make no mistakes, and I don't do... Anything. What the fuck is that? What kind of a mentality is it to go into video games like that, right? I feel like that's you've completely missed the mark if this is who you are. And God forbid you make a mistake, not everyone's going to make fun of you on the internet. How about you kiss my ass, right? Like, that's ridiculous. I should Now I should walk on eggshells when I play Zelda, because God forbid I say or do something that might irk a fanboy crowd on TikTok. TikTok can literally lick my shit out of my ass. I don't care about TikTok. I don't care about any of these morons who do this viral shit. It's so fucking nonsensical and means nothing. You know what I mean? It's just complete nonsense. It doesn't have any bearing on anything of reality. Here, are you ready? 
I'm in one moment. I'm going to destroy the viral bullshit. You ready for this? Here, clip this one, motherfuckers. The lightning mechanic in the Zelda Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom is a complete nonsensical mechanic that's only there to annoy the player. Why? Because it doesn't help the game. What does it do? Does it add any challenge? Well, how do you stop yourself by hitting, getting hit by lightning? Take metal equipment off. Okay? And then when the lightning storm passes, you put your metal equipment back on. So what did that add to the game? Did that add significant challenge? Did that add any story progression? Did that add any element of fun, amusement, or even any real challenge? No, nothing. It literally is there to be tedious. It's a tedious thing to say, oh, there's a storm, take my equipment off for a couple seconds and put it back on. There's no point to it. It's just there to say, hey, more content in the game. In a game that's already bloated, in a game that already has more than enough content, they tossed in gameplay elements that are nonsensical and add absolutely nothing. Yeah. It's annoying, and it's easy to get around, but at the same time, you have a perfectly valid reason to criticize it. It doesn't do anything for the game. It doesn't make my experience better. It doesn't make it harder. It just makes it more annoying. That shouldn't be in the game. Anything that's in a game just to add annoyance factor, to say, oh, there's more content in the game, shouldn't be in a video game, because the video game's about enjoyment. It's not about adding levels of tedium to make your game longer. I don't care about the fucking sentient lightning like Thor's hammer is being raised and it's coming down to strike me out of the sky. It adds nothing to Tears of the Kingdom. It adds nothing to Breath of the Wild. It's a waste of everyone's time. It should be criticized. And if you criticize shit like that, they won't put dumb shit like that in video games anymore. But no one does. Oh, it's Nintendo, so kiss the butt. Oh, Miyamoto. Oh, thank you for striking me with your sentient lightning. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Start calling dumb shit out and actually focus on the things that matter. This game, Tears of the Kingdom, has tons of great content in it. Really tons of great content in it. It's a great game. Overall, my playthrough, I'm very much strongly praising this game. Saying that I li really like the game. I do feel the game is bloated. I do feel the pacing is off. And it does have a lot of superfluous things like that that you have to remember. Which is stupid. Why do I have to remember a bunch of tedious little things that just make my playthrough more annoying? Why can't I just enjoy the game for at a streamlined pace of what it is? That's really the problem. There's no streamlining or proper pacing in the game because of the way that they've designed it to be truly open world. But hey, overall, I'm having a great time. I'm like 32, 33 hours into the game. I really like it. So why on earth do I become the scapegoat as someone who sucks at the game and basically doesn't like it? It's not true. You've taken one moment out of context of a playthrough and turned it into something it's not for viral popularity. Well, good for you. Didn't affect me in any fucking way. I don't care. And I'm not going to walk on eggshells playing Zelda moving forward. I'm going to play it how I want. I'm going to say what the fuck I want. I don't care about you. And the best thing that I can say to my audience here, all right, it's this simple, all right? Take all that nonsense, that white noise, and take it out of your life. And I mean that. This is, this is going to be personally applying to everyone out there listening. To your own personal lives, you have to take all that nonsense and just ignore it. That white noise shit that you hear, everyone criticizing, everyone making fun, all that nonsense, it's never going to go away. In life, there's always going to be people who try to bring you down. There's always going to be people who try to make you look bad no matter what. You want to know why? Because it makes them feel better about themselves. Oh, I didn't get hit by lightning, so haha, -ha, now let me make fun of someone who did and like, laughed and made fun about it. Uh, fuck you. How about get a fucking life and focus on yourself and stop looking at everyone else around you and trying to bring them down so you should feel like a better person, right? I don't care about how other people played Zelda. I'm not watching anyone else's playthrough of Zelda and making fun of them. You know what I'm saying? I'm here to enjoy the game at my own pace and like it for what it is. I do like it. I really do enjoy it. I have criticisms of it. I have the right to make valid criticisms. You can't tell me that that lightning is a good mechanic of the game and it adds anything. It adds literally nothing. It's just an annoying thing you have to remember among a million other things you have to fucking remember, right? Um, it's dumb in that regard. But in life, you're always going to have this element of people who are making this white noise around you. My best recommendation in this case is to ignore it. If you haven't noticed, in the last several weeks, I've ignored all this bullshit. All these idiots on the periphery always talking about dark side Phil and DSP and this, negative about him and that, negative about him and that. You notice I don't care. I'm just sitting here. I'm so busy with the stuff I'm doing, right? Trying to finish up those playthroughs in May. I've been so busy with new releases now this last week, week and a half. I don't give a shit about any of these morons saying this stuff. But what irks me is when I go to play the game again last night for the first time in a week, and I get people coming in saying, oh, your playthrough sucks now because now everyone's making fun of you, and now, you, you know, 
you're, you're you're joking about it, and now you're not making any progress anymore. Now you don't even remember the game anymore. It's like, yeah, you know, it sucks. It sucks because I like the game, and I know that last month, if I hadn't been trying to wrap up other games, if I wasn't wrapping up Jedi Survivor and Final Fantasy V and Oblivion, if I wasn't in a big, like like I called it, the home court press to finish all that before Street Fighter Six came out, I probably would have been able to put a lot more time and effort into Zelda, and I probably would be nearly at the end of the game now like most people, or or already have beaten it, you know? Right now, it seems like there's two different, uh, there's two different schools of thought on Zelda. It was an amazing game that everyone played for two, three weeks straight beat, or man, that game's so long and tedious, and I never got past the first ten hours, and I stopped playing it. I'm not in either boat. Like, I like the game, but I, I didn't have time to rush through it, so I'm kind of like this unique situation right now, <clears throat> where I kind of have to, uh, you know, I have to figure out how I'm going to do it. I want to play Zelda, but if the game really is going to take a minimum of, let's say, 60 hours to beat, even if I just adhere to the main story. I'm only 32 hours in. That's another 15, 16 sessions. And I'm only going to be playing it two to three times a week tops. You're telling me I have to play it for three months? You know what I mean? Like, I really do feel like these games in, in the modern day have this weird feeling of, like, self-importance. When you make a game that's 100 hours long, you know what you're saying to the gamer? You're saying, I am what you will play now until you beat me. <laughs> that's what you're saying. Because if you have a 100-hour daunting game and you play it for 20, 30 hours and you put it down for a week, in another week, are you really going to want to pick it back up again? No, you're going to want to have that momentum. And if you lose that momentum, then you kind of lose your desire to really play it, right? And that's what really I think what's going on here with, with Zelda is... It's a game that's so lengthy with the amount of content that it has. It's like, you must play me, and if you don't, you might as well not play me. You understand what I'm saying? Like, either you play it all and you enjoy it right away, or you basically don't play it. And really, I think you're, a, lot of, a lot of these game developers are missing the point at this point. Every RPG should not be 100 hours long. Zelda, in case in point, Zelda was never the RPG that was designed to be 100 hours long. Take a look at where Zelda's roots, right? I mean, yeah, Zelda was an open world or whatever, but Zelda was always a game that you could streamline and you could play and enjoy. And yes, there was always other content, but I mean, to me, I look at it, I'm like, it's a Nintendo game. And Nintendo games, I've never, I, I can't even in my mind think of a Nintendo game that's like, this is the game that you must play for two months. You know what I mean? Like, never. Nintendo was always like, incredibly high, polished quality. The, the Nintendo seal of approval meant something back in the day. When you were playing a first-party Nintendo game, you were playing a game of the utmost polished quality. And you knew that. And it might not be an incredibly lengthy experience, but you knew that was going to be an incredible, memorable experience. You know what I'm saying? Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is like, hey, clear your fucking schedule. You ain't playing nothing for a month, man. You know, it's funny because I, I see people now who are not hardcore gamers who are just playing non-stop they're people with lives or whatever and they're posting up oh I'm just finally getting around to the end of Zelda and they've been playing it since launch and it's the only game they've played for a month and they're finally just getting to the end of it right <clears throat> so listen I get it at the same time I, I really do feel like we're, we're getting to a problem where these games are too long I don't want every RPG that I play to be 100 hours why is it that Zelda Diablo Final Fantasy are all coming out within a month and they're all going to be 100 hour games how the how does anyone play them all? Like, what is that What is that mentality? If you're someone who's, who's designing a game like that, should you not look around you at the gaming landscape and say, okay, well, I know my game's 100 hours. It's an RPG. I'll release my game in February because I know Final Fantasy's coming out in June. And by the way, Diablo should come out in, like, October and spread them out. Now, oh, let's all release in a month and I'll cut into each other. <laughs> right? I don't know. It just it drives me bonkers. Oh, is that true? Dabby Hand says Final Fantasy 16 is 35 hours long. Now, is that just the main story? Or is that the entirety of the game, including side content as well? Hmm. I'm curious. I should I should actually look into that. But But yeah, like, you know, this is that's my situation right now, you know? Like, I understand people are frustrated with the Zelda playthrough. So am I. I really wish I could have played it more last month and I could have put more focus on it and I could have been less scatterbrained and maybe I would have remembered the lightning mechanic and maybe I would remember what a cooking pot looks like and maybe I would actually care more to learn 
the, the, the building and puzzle mechanics of the game, but I just, to me, it's like I'm enjoying it when I play it, but not being able to focus on it, I don't think I'm ever going to enjoy it as much as someone who could just sit there and play it for three weeks. You know what I'm saying? No, it's a no-brainer. This game will be in my Game of the Year countdown. It's that good of a game, right? Which is hilarious because if you listen to the fucking TikTok idiots, they think that I'm like, I hate the game or something. They're just morons. That's what they do when they take something out of context for personal gain. They make everything look bad. But to me, like personally, I lo I'm loving the game. Every time I play it, I'm like, oh, I get to play Zelda tonight. Last night, I had a lot of fun exploring the Goron Town. We're riding the minecarts around. We actually went to an optional cave by accident and stumbled upon a shrine. Cool. Let's go in the shrine. Let's do that. That element of exploration and surprise and wonder of a big open world is a huge positive for the game. But at the same time, I, I'm, I'm dreading that the rate that I'm playing it, people aren't going to care that much, you know? And I can't I can't just drop everything to play Zelda. There's other games out that people want to see more, you know? I get, I mean, I want to play Street Fighter 6. I'm craving Street Fighter 6. Right now as I talk, I'm craving Street Fighter 6. I want to play I want to play a new character today, right? So that's the thing, like, in the gaming landscape, it's not just about one game, one genre, 100 hours. If they're going to make a 100-hour game, they got to make it worth your while. Sorry, but I'm sorry. In the month of May, I didn't see... The benefit in dropping Jedi Survivor and Final Fantasy V and Oblivion so we could just play Zelda for three weeks and then never go back to those playthroughs because other new games came out. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, the other thing is that I can't win because if I only, let's say, for example, someone just suggested in the chat, why don't you only play two games at a time? Okay? Only play two games at a time. Well, as of now, I'm playing three to four games at a time and I'm already getting tons of complaints. Why didn't you play this one? Why didn't you play that one? Right now I'm getting complaints. Why didn't I play the Lies of P demo that came out the other day? When would I play it? Right? I'm here six days a week full time streaming for you guys. Not, when am I going to play the Lies of P demo? Right? What about Amnesia the Bunker that just came out on Gamepad? When am I going to play that? You see? There's just no way you can play everything. These days, there's so many games coming out at a rapid pace um, and unexpected things that pop up out of nowhere. <clears throat> I can't do it all. You know, again, back in the day when I started as a YouTuber, things were very different. There actually weren't that many game releases. In, in a given week, you could on one hand count how many game releases were coming out. That's how it was. Now it's like there's always a million indies, Game Pass games, full retail games, half-priced retail games. A million, there's like 27 games a week. And you have to sift through the pile of games to figure out which ones are the ones even worth playing and then which ones would fit into a streaming schedule and which ones people want to see. It's tough. It's so very, 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 very different from everything that it used to be. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. I think a lot of people are still living in the past. Well, I don't understand why Phil can't play this game, this game, this game, this game, this game, and this game within a one-month period, be good at all of them, master all of those systems, not make fun of the game or have a criticism for the game. It's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what planet do we live on? It's just not possible. You understand? So anyway, I want you guys to understand I'm doing my best. I am. And, and you know, it's going to be a stressful month to month and a half here. It is. Trying to play all these hot games and, and juggle. I, the thing is, I would much rather be in a situation where I have so much going on and everyone is enjoying the stuff I'm putting out than a situation where there's nothing going on and everyone's bored. I'd much rather have it like it is now. But it does make it a lot more stressful for me. Okay? And I hope you understand that. And what I will say is, listen, you can't stop idiots on the internet from doing and saying what they do. You can't. Alright? What you can do is you can let it get to you. I'm not letting it get to me. I'm not even paying attention. I wouldn't have even known about people making fun of my lightning comments in Zelda if you guys didn't come to the stream and tell me about it and try to derail the stream, quite frankly, which a lot of people uh, got banned because they were trying to constantly derail my stream about it. I wouldn't even know about it. I don't pay attention to any of their shit. I don't. There's so many idiots out there. This is what they... they they thrive on drama. They thrive on negativity and toxicity, right? Where's where's the funny moments montage of Phil playing Zelda where he had a good time or he had a fun boss fight or, he, you know, here's a mechanic he figured out right away, which happened in the playthrough. Notice that doesn't get highlighted. It's only the the one moment that someone feels is looks bad or out of context. You know, that's what gets, gets highlighted and that's what becomes the white noise of the internet that tries to bring you down. In life, you can't let that shit bring you down. You can't. If that was the case, 15 years ago, 
When I first started getting criticism for my videos, I would have quit. When the first This Is How You Don't Play came out, I would have quit. I'm not going to quit based on a bunch of idiots causing drama on the internet. But I'll say this, I'm not going to sit here and talk about it uh, when it's happening because there's no point. You notice, it was, this was like over a week ago when that, that shit was happening. I purposefully ignored it because I was like, there's no way that I want to deal with that shit when I'm trying to juggle all this other stuff. I'm already stressed out and I know that there's all this good stuff coming. What's the point, right? What you do, what you do is you just give them more bait for what they want, right? So, But I just want to let you know because now I came back to Zelda last night. And I did see a lot of attitudes. I got some comments overnight and everything. People frustrated with the playthrough. You know, I made a comment during the Zelda playthrough last night about the, the lightning bullshit. You know? And I have the right to do that. I do. I'm sorry. I have the right to criticize the game. You don't have to agree with me. That's fine. If you think I'm off base, that's perfectly fine. You know? But I should have the right to say what I want during my own fucking playthrough and not feel like I'm walking on eggshells. Like someone's going to be offended or someone out there's going to make a video about it. I don't give a shit. I never have. I never will. Let them do their own bullshit outside of my streams. If you haven't noticed, it literally didn't affect my streams in any way, shape, or form. We've been having a great time for the last, you know, two weeks with gameplay and, and progress and fun. It doesn't affect shit. So let them do what they want. And they can kiss my fucking ass for all I care. I mean, I'm 41 years old. I've been doing this for 15 years. Your little bullshit is not going to affect me in the least. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Anyway. Let's now get back on topic, shall we? Okay, so let's talk about everything going on here. Um, today, we're doing Mano. I, I'm just going to call her Mano from now on. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce her name. I don't care. No one seems to be giving me a direct pronunciation of her name. I haven't heard her name said once in the game. So I'm just going to say her name is Mano. And if it's wrong, I actually don't give a shit. Her name is Mano from now on. Or I'll start calling her Mino. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm trying today. Um... Reason being, because she seems like an interesting hybrid. She's got interesting strikes and juggles, but she also has a lot of throw mix-ups. And once you get a throw or two, you immediately buff the throw damage for a second throw that will be ridiculously damaging. So, I feel like there's actually certain characters who are actually going to be very weak against her because of throw mix-ups. I think that throw mix-ups are actually strong in Street Fighter Six. So, we'll see today. I'm going to try her out. And, uh... You know, and we'll see how it goes. I don't know if it's going to be a character who I pick up and I really like or a character that, meh, I don't want to play again. We'll see, but I'm going to try today. That is my character that I'm focusing on today. We're going to do the guide. We're going to do combo trials, and we're going to go into multiplayer and, and see how it goes. Um, That's it. No light stream tonight because tonight I'm filming my private React videos for patrons. All right? But starting tomorrow and for the next three straight days, it is nonstop full-time game coverage for you guys. Tomorrow's mainstream Street Fighter VI World Tour. We're finally going in the World Tour. We're checking out this single-player mode. We're going to see what it's all about. We're going to build up my custom avatar character who looks absolutely hilarious because he looks similar to me, which is weird to have a hyper-realistic character in Street Fighter. Um, and then tomorrow night will be more chill Diablo fun. Then Tuesday, more Street Fighter VI. And either what I will do is do a multiplayer session where I play with more Zangief and Mano, or we'll try a third new character. We'll see. Okay? Um... We'll go from there. We'll see. I don't know what I want to do yet. And then Tuesday night will be more Zelda. So there you go. Mark your calendars. If you want to be there for the Zelda stream so I can sit there and make fun of Phil, that's when it is. Okay? And then Wednesday will be another Street Fighter Six stream. It'll either, again, be just multiplayer or a new character. And then Wednesday night will be more uh, <clears throat> Diablo 4. And then no stream on Thursday. Thursday is my day off this week. Now, next week will be a five-day streaming week, of course. I do have a React show scheduled for Saturday, but I will have other days with full-time gaming, and the whole focus is Street Fighter VI during day streams, Diablo and uh, Zelda during night streams, all right? N that week after, my day off actually will be a Wednesday because that Thursday, which I believe is the 22nd, is the premiere of Final Fantasy XVI, which I absolutely will be playing on release day, okay? So, there you go. And then... Basically, the daytime streams will be Street Fighter VI, Final Fantasy XVI, and the night streams will be Diablo, Zelda. And that's kind of how I'm planning to do it for a while, actually, because I think the next major high-profile new release coming out will actually be like Pikmin in July, and we'll see how far we can get in all these games by then. Okay? So there you go. Now, yes, we have something in the works. It is called DSP's DSP. <laughs> yes, it's actually called that. This is my upcoming marathon, alright? This is going to be a special event that's going to be coming up 
the first weekend of July. All right? And... Oh. Um, the first weekend in July, I'm doing a marathon. And that marathon is going to be a, a good variety of stuff. It's going to be gameplay. It's going to be some drinking. Ooh. There's going to be tear maker. There's going to be food. It's going to be a party atmosphere. It's going to be a way to bring in a summer of gaming fun. I'm calling it DSP's DSP or DSP to the power of two, which stands for DSP's Digital Summer Party. All right? We're going to start promoting it that way. Obviously, uh, hopefully I'm getting some promotional art and stuff soon. I hope. I guess we'll see. And uh, it's going to be exciting. And uh, we'll start planning for it soon. I guess the question really is, what would you like during that event? Do you want Street Fighter VI gameplay? I'm thinking we should do a little bit, at least. It'll be the hot multiplayer game. Um, do you want other gameplay of some sort during that? Tier Maker. What kind of Tier Maker rankings could we do? I'm definitely thinking we should do a Tier Maker with food. For some reason, food gets people excited. And so what Tier Maker should we do, being that it's supposed to be like kind of a, a, an American summer bash party, maybe rank American cuisine... Right? I mean, there's so many different kinds of American food. I'm not talking fast food. I'm talking like just American cuisine in general. Like you rank macaroni and cheese and meatloaf and, and burgers, and, you know, all these classic American meals and kind of rank them together and say, what's what's the best American food, right? Something like that. Like, because when you think of different cultural foods, you think, oh, well, Italy, well, you got kinds of pasta, you got pizza, you got, you know, these special breads and things. You can rank all of those. But what about American foods? A lot of people don't overdrink just American fare, right? So I think we should maybe do something like that. But outside of that, what other things, right? And we could talk about this. We could, you know, figure this out over the course of this, the rest of the month. What kind of things would you like to see in a tear maker? My wife is going to look up several recipes online and probably cook two to three different things during the course of the day. Some of which will be like real, like food for like a meal. But other might be like a dessert. That'll be like American style food, like a summertime foods. Okay, so that's gonna be neat. It's gonna be a good event, um, a good variety event. I like doing these. We did one back in May. It went really well. That's why I'm looking to do another one here. I think it'll go really well early July. But let's talk over the course of uh, the rest of June about what exactly you guys would like to see. So mark your calendars. Sunday, July second. DSP's DSP is coming. <laughs> yes. Okay, not confusing at all. But it's catchy. At least you can remember the name of it, right? It's funny because people say, well, what does the D second DSP stand for? No one's going to remember. It's Digital Summer Party. There you go. All right. Um, <clears throat> so, outside of all of that, um, what else is there to really talk about? Well, like I said, this Microsoft event is going on right now. And I watched about 30 minutes of it this morning as I was eating breakfast and stuff. And I'll be honest. It's not that the games at this event look bad. I'm just feeling like it, it's hard to not be jaded about modern video games. And here's why I say this. 10, 15 years ago, when new games would be released at E3, it was like, wow, a, a game, a, you know, innovative idea, a thing we've never seen before, right? Now it's like, what games do you even see these days that are like something that blew you away that you've never seen before? Every game that they're showing at this Xbox showcase fits right into an established genre or archetype we've already seen, right? Really. Like, there was one game, and it starts playing. It's like, oh, it's Japanese culture, like feudal times, and all of a sudden demons start coming out. I'm like, okay, so it's Neo, so it's Wolong, so it's the games we just saw a million of in the last two, three years. Like, there's a million of this game, right? So it's hard to get excited. I think it's called, like, like Prayers of the Goddess. How can I get excited when it's just another game that looks the same as the others we've just played? Right? And then you got a game. Oh, it's third person action, some platforming in there. Oh, so it's going to be like Hi Fi Rush. Right? Then there's another one. Right? <laughs> oh, it's first person exploration. It's a guy in a suit. He's on an oil rig, but everyone's gone. No one knows what's happened. He's investigating. Oh, so you mean it's like Subnautica or it's like one of these first person adventure games where you just read logs and try to solve puzzles? We played all these before. You understand? Like, I feel like I played that already. Yes, this is the latest, greatest one with better, better graphics. But it's the same game I play. I'm just playing it in another iteration from another team, but it's still the same shit again. And it's hard when, you, when it doesn't feel like there's that much innovation at all anymore. It's, it's, it's like people aren't really trying to, to make something different. They're just trying to make something that they know will sell because people bought it already. You know what I mean? That's frustrating. You know, the Xbox showcase should be a showcase of just that. 
games that are now Xbox showing off all the talent of the studios they bought and saying, here's what we're going to do different from if you're playing on PC or if you're playing on PlayStation. Here's the innovation. Here's the variety. Here's the true new fun you're going to get having the Xbox series of consoles. I, I didn't get that impression. Watching the Xbox presentation, here's another game of this genre you already played. Here's another, they're just shoveling them out. It's a shovel at this point. They're going, here's the games you play. Here's some more of the same. Here's some more of the same. Here's some more of the same. Here's some... Let, okay. <clears throat> here's a good way to put it. Let's say you absolutely love chocolate ice cream. Chocolate ice cream is your favorite. Every once in a while, you'll eat some vanilla. You'll eat some strawberry. You know, you'll like butterscotch. But chocolate's your favorite. So you eat chocolate ice cream all the time. And then all of a sudden, someone comes out and says, hey, here's a new kind of chocolate ice cream. Okay, so you eat that. Oh, it's pretty good. I like that, that they did something a little different with chocolate ice cream. But then this company over here, here's another kind of chocolate ice cream. And this company over here, well, here's another kind of chocolate. Here's another. Every company all of a sudden is making chocolate ice cream. And that's it. Okay, well, at one point, you're going to get tired of chocolate ice cream, are you not? You're like, I've had enough of chocolate. When will there be something new? Doesn't matter. Chocolate's what sells. Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate fudge, chocolate ripple, chocolate brownie, chocolate delight, Rocky Road with chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. Like, what the fuck? I've had enough of chocolate. I want something new now. But they, no one will make it because they only want to push out chocolate because that's what sells, right? That's what's going on right now, I feel like, with the gaming industry. Um, seriously. And it was, diff it was very different 10, even 10 years ago, 15 years ago. I remember... 2013, that year, when I was playing video games, it was like hit after hit after hit, and every game was trying to innovate, and every game was doing something a little different and outside the box. It felt like a crazy good year where any direction you went, there was something good happening in gaming. And now it's like, I watch an entire presentation, and I haven't seen a single game that stood out that looked different from anything else. They all look like stuff I've already played. That's pretty crazy to me. And when the funny part is, it's not that games are stale for me. I'm really enjoying Street Fighter VI. I think Diablo was a great chill game. And Zelda, every time I play it, I'm, I'm blown away by the physics, the, the way that they've designed this world with the puzzles. I'm, I'm having a great time with video games. But it is hard for me to not get jaded when it seems like the companies aren't really trying that hard anymore to do something different. I don't want to play the next generic third-person action game that either looks like anime or Japanese culture. You know what I mean? I don't want to play the next game that's a first-person exploration game where there's a mystery everyone's missing, you gotta read logs and solve puzzles. I've done this, I've played that game 12 times already. I want something new. Where is something new? Is anyone even trying to do anything new? Or is the risk too great that if you fail, now you got a business or, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. It's kind of making me worried about the future of games in a lot of ways. We just had Sony. Did Sony do anything groundbreaking? No. Now we have Xbox. Did anybody, Xbox do anything groundbreaking today? No. Then who's going to do it? If it ain't going to be the big boys, then who's going to be the one to take the chance to do something different, to step outside the comfort zone and make something truly unique? And when you say, well, there are truly unique games, but they need a 600 VR headset, $600 VR headset, I say, well, then you failed. Because the whole point of innovation is creating it within the means that people can enjoy it. Not, oh, we have innovation, but you have to invest insane amounts of money to experience the innovation. That's just elitist innovation then. And that doesn't doesn't count. You know what I mean? <clears throat> we got different opinions. Ellipsian says, I don't think you'll ever get anything truly new anymore. It feels like everything's already been done. You know? <laughs> Dine says, you're not supposed to question the product. Just get excited for the next product. <laughs> you're right. I mean, that's just like the mentality. You're supposed, you're supposed to be buying into the hype train no matter what. Don't criticize. Don't actually consciously think about what you're seeing, just get hyped for it, right? Dabhan says, there's only so many stories you can tell. It's unlikely we'll get something truly innovative if everything's already been done. I See, here's the truth. I don't believe that at all. I really don't. I don't believe everything's been done. I think what's happened is within a 10 to 15 year period, gaming advanced massively. We had a huge spike in gaming and gaming became the biggest entertainment medium as it became more profitable, correct? And what happened is you had a bunch of people all throw their hats into the ring of making games, so they all made the same games. I do feel like there's innovation to be had. I do. The question is, who's going to be the one to get noticed for it? Because I guarantee you there's innovative games being made, but no one knows about them because they're indie games. They're not getting the highlight they deserve because they don't have the giant budgets. You know what I'm saying? They don't have the, the, the opportunity to get the limelight. And there probably are outstanding games out there that don't get the light of day. It's bullshit. You know? Back, back in the day... 
those games would be made by big companies. Now the big companies don't take the chances anymore. That's the problem. Yeah, Eternal Bomb says the law of diminishing returns is having an effect on gamers now. I think you're right. I, I absolutely think you're right in that regard. It's it's now is diminishing returns. Like, I'm so excited for this event. You watch, wow, it was all the same shit again. Like, I mean, yeah, some of it looks like it's good. It'll, it'll be a better version of what I've already played, but you're still playing the same shit you already play. <clears throat> Lady Charisma says, if the game is good, does it have to reinvent the wheel? Well, okay, uh, fair enough. There is there is a mantra out there. If it, if, it ain't bro if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it, right? But that's how you get Call of Duty. That's how you get Madden. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's how you get NBA 2K. That's how you get same exact fucking game every year and charge you full price for it, and people are somehow brainwash say oh yes i must right you want to know the truth about that too and this is the sad fact about it that's how you get pokemon scarlet and violet where the game runs completely like fucking shit there's no excuse for that performance but people buy it and it's the best selling pokemon ever because they're just brainwashed to say don't ask for better just expect the same and as long as it leads, leads up to those check boxes that we're looking for and it checks the boxes we're good that's not a good mentality to have as a consumer. You want to ask for better. You don't want Pokemon to be the same thing again with worse graphics. And then we all pay $70 for it. You understand? We, we have to be demanding better. Or else things won't get better. <laughs> anyway, this is an interesting discussion to have. I'm glad we're having it today. This is something different to do on the podcast, no? I like having these different discussions. That's why I do this show. It's hilarious because some people are like, just don't do the podcast, just play the games. Yeah, but isn't it fun to have this discussion when this stuff is going on? And now people can actually... Here's here's my goal with this show. <clears throat> if I can make a couple people think about stuff that maybe they weren't thinking about, right? That's the whole point. And now maybe you watch the, the Xbox showcase with one mentality, but now you're listening to the discussion. Now you're like, you know, it kind of has a point. Where was the innovation today? Then I've done my job. You understand? That's what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to get everyone jaded out there. I'm just trying to get people to get out of this, this brainwash mentality of hype. There's so much of this, we are groupthink mentality. Everything is hype. Everything must be consumed. And that's a bad mentality to have. You have to be thinking from intelligent perspective, comparing things to other things. You have to see big picture. And a lot of people don't do that. They just see, oh, there was so much hype for today. Everything was great, 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 great. No, 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 no. Step back. Look. From different directions, okay? Arkham, I did get your email, and thank you. And sorry again. I, I get everyone's emails. I just don't respond to most of them because I don't have time. But I did see your email, and thank you for that. Okay. What's hilarious is an honest fan says, Oh, it's not that serious. It's video games. What did you just say? You're telling me the biggest entertainment medium on planet Earth is not serious business. That's what you're telling me. But movies are serious business, and TV is serious business, and music is serious business, but games aren't? That's ludicrous. That is a really stupid mentality to, to have, really. That's like, and that's what I've heard. Oh, we can let this pass because it's just video games. It's not serious. That's, no, it is. In fact, now video games are more serious than all that other shit. They've jumped over it and surpassed it. Now it's time to start taking this shit seriously. <clears throat> Oh, my nose. I didn't say people are idiots for buying Pokemon Scarlet. I said that's how Pokemon Scarlet ends up being as it is. Why was Pokemon Scarlet a game that ran like shit? Because people keep accepting that Pokemon will just run like shit and they buy it anyway. That's not good for the industry. I bought Pokemon Scarlet because people want me to do a playthrough of it and that's my job. But... If I were a consumer buying it for personal uh, enjoyment, I'd probably be pretty pissed that the game ran like that, you know? <clears throat> Easy mode said, I see Ken is the most played Street Fighter character in Street Fighter 6. Dalsim is last. That doesn't make that doesn't shock me in any way. That makes perfect sense. You're, you're literally talking order of execution difficulty. Ken is an incredibly easy character to play. Insane amount of rushdown, mix-ups, and things that are hard to defend against. Dalsim is very hard to play and doesn't have a lot of that or if it does, it's very high execution. That makes perfect sense to me, what you just said. 
Argum, I am going to keep using Shuffle on DSP Reacts moving forward. Happy Sunday to you, Mango. Oh, that's, I know, that's hilarious, Dab Hand. He says, what do you think of faux attempts at, faux attempts, excuse me, at making something seem different, like a rubbish game that's zombies, but it has John Carpenter's name slam, slapped on it to make it look like it's a different game? Yeah, that's exactly right. Because again, you look at, I don't even know what that game is. We watched it, right? We watched it together, and you're like, John Carpenter's Toxic Shithole, or whatever it's called. And it's like, what is it? Is it Left 4 Dead? Is it a story-based campaign? Is it co-op survival? Is it single player? I don't even know. When you've shown off your game and the highlight of the game is John Carpenter's name on it, you've already failed. I need to know at least what the game is. I don't even know what that game is right now. And it's obvious they don't want you to know. They just want you to know it's John Carpenter and get hyped for a John Carpenter game. Just because John Carpenter has made really great movies, right? So, <clears throat> that is pretty sad. <clears throat> Well, Juan, I hope your un your uncle has a great birthday on Friday. I don't know why you're telling me about his, his birthday, but I hope he has a good birthday regardless. Oh, man. All right, guys, here's what we're going to do. We're, it's already past noon, which I didn't even realize. Well, one of those days. Let's do shout-outs. Let's get to shout-outs. Let's get these shout-outs going. So at least we get the shout-outs out of the way before we begin. Um, and then if we have time for Q&A or whatever, we'll do it. But I, wa I definitely don't want to let these shout-outs go too long. So let's do this, okay? So... <clears throat> Phew. Um, we start today with some overnight tips. What a surprise. All right. We start off today with a $29.99 tip. All right. So let's do it. I think you know who it's from. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the great game trekker who supported the stream overnight. Let's get them up on the leaderboard to start today. That is not correct. It's 30. Okay. And let's see what Game Trekker has to say about today. He says, Mano or Marisa, huh? Whatever you choose, you're trying another fighter who doesn't really have a fully invincible reversal outside of a super. Best of luck. As for a tip, I'm fresh out of general gameplay. Instead, I want to bring up something specific to your gameplay. Here's a question. What do you believe your biggest weakness is when it comes to ranked play? Um, I'll, Before I continue, because he says more, my I'll tell you right now. I have two big, 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 big weaknesses. Weakness number one, I'm not breaking throws. I'm getting thrown all the time, and I'm not bre throw breaking. Throw breaking becomes muscle memory after a while when you, you're in a mix-up situation and you think someone's going to try to throw you, and you learn the pattern, and then you break. I can do it in certain games, all right? Super Turbo is one I could do it all the time, all right, because I've played the most of that one. Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, to some extent I can do it, but in Street Fighter 6... That is a huge weakness of mine. I get thrown all the time, and I almost never throw break. So that's definitely a problem. That's number one. Number two, my problem is when I get into a corner, I essentially don't know what to do to get out with certain characters. If my character has a true reversal, then I can usually get out of that situation. But outside of that, like, should I be blocking and then doing drive reversal? Should I try to parry? Should I just block and wait for an opening and try to move? Should I do a reversal move, like a, like an e, a, a overdrive move? <clears throat> Should I try just a standard drive impact? And it seems like it's a gamble, it's a risk, and it's, I'm just guessing. And when I guess, I almost always guess wrong. So if I'm getting rushed down in the corner, I almost always lose because I get stuck in the corner. That's a definite problem online for me. And then just in general... The drive meter usage, I'm not really using it as much. Like, I definitely should be using more parries, I feel. Drive impact, I'm starting to use now, but I need to learn better timings and better opportunities to use it. And, you know, it's it, I'm really having a problem countering drive impact. Not to say that everyone's spamming it and it's a huge deal like it was in the beta for me, but drive impact, I should be able to easily counter it. I'm not. It's just, I'm, I'm a slug in this regard. I admit it. I'm, I'm The slow reflexes. I think, again, playing the game a longer term, it will become more second nature to me, but it's something that I have to do. The, a lot of people playing Street Fighter 6, you got to understand, this is what they've been playing for a week straight. They haven't played anything else. I've played Street Fighter 6. I've played Diablo 4. I've played Zelda. I've played tons of different characters in Street Fighter 6 while they were playing the same character over and over. <clears throat> you see? So, I have a lot of weaknesses. No, th Not enough or no throw breaks. Not knowing what to do to get out of a corner in a situational where, where I'm being rushed down. And just drive impact use in general. 
So I have a lot of weaknesses right now, I feel, in my game. Okay? Now, let's continue on. He says, There are plenty of common weaknesses out there, like self-doubt, difficulty with execution, or not knowing how to formulate a game plan. What would you say yours is? I think I just explained. Actually, in my opinion, you have two, although one is personal, the other is because of your job. The job, job one is essentially lack of knowledge experience, a result of the limitations of your playtime. What about the personal one? My take on this is my next tip, but I want to hear your thoughts before you read it. Well, I already did. I already told you. And I agree there. <clears throat> if I had more time or unlimited time to play Street Fighter, right, I would have likely pr probably tried every of the 18 characters already and would have been practicing and maybe, you know, how do I get that drive impact on reaction or whatever, you know, practicing that out. I don't even really know what all the drive impact animations look like yet because they look different for every character. So I don't even know yet. You know, I need to I need to play more. <clears throat> okay, on to the next tip. And this is a twenty dollar tip again from Game Checker. Thank you. <clears throat> Let's see here. Which means it's gonna glass this time already. Thank you so much, Game Trekker. I really mean it. Game Trekker's been a humongous proponent of me playing Street Fighter VI. Thank you so much, Game Trekker. And I, I just want people to understand just him simply coming by and giving me tips about the game, not the financial tips. I'm talking the knowledge that he's been laying on me has helped me dramatically this week. It really has. Because I don't have time to do all this research and everything. And it's helping me a ton. I feel like I'm much better at the game simply because he's been helping me. And thank you so much, Game Trekker, because of that. Okay, he says, uh, this is the second tip. Okay, he had to say that because sometimes PayPal screws up the order. Seems like the order's working now. It actually seems like PayPal may have caught up and is working properly again, I hope. He says, anyway, my answer is in a word, tilt. It's natural for a person to become heated over a competitive game. I'm no stranger to that myself, but emotions really do get to you to a point where it seems they do indeed affect your gameplay. Most glaring moments tend to be scramble situations where you're suddenly losing your confidence, playing desperately or extremely aggressively. When trying to stay solid could easily win you the round. I've seen you lose with Dalsim. When you're hugely in the lead, you decided to approach recklessly. I saw Tilted Phil try to rush down the secret boss of Kirby in the Forgotten Land. That did not work. In the right headspace, <clears throat> you play exceptionally solidly, particularly with anti-airs. Being mindful when you're tilted and focusing on staying solid could potentially help your play. You're right. That's absolutely correct. One million percent agree that I can get tilted, heated, whatever you want to call it. And when you get hot under the collar... And I turn into the Hulk. <laughs> I start punching my joystick. I start swearing. I want to rip my shirt off. Ah! Yes, you're absolutely. That's that's absolutely correct. And the thing is, that's a side of me. A lot of you have probably not seen in a while. Arguably, maybe the last few times you've seen it is me playing like a FromSoft game on a boss I just can't beat. And I'm trying for the millionth time to beat him. And it's really getting to, getting to me. I'm really getting fucked up, fucking pissed at it or whatever. <clears throat> um, yeah, I get. I hear you. I'm, I'm I'm with you there. That's something that is going to come better in time. And if you want to know the truth, this is actually the truth. I'm better at it now than I used to be. I used to get heated all the time. If I would start to <clears throat> have things go wrong, I would get upset like real upset and then that's it because once you're upset your game is thrown off it's crazy because sometimes when you're upset you can play better and that's actually happened where i get so upset i'm like nah fuck this right but definitely in you know in street fighter 6 i've i've been playing worse when i get more agitated so you're absolutely right i have to agree there that I, that's something i have to work on yes and that'll come again with more confidence with more comfort it's weird because it's almost every time i play the game i'm playing a new character right so i'm not confident once I play these characters several times and I kind of know, okay, I know the matchup, I know what to do here, I'm in my groove, then that more calmness will come. Do you see? There you go. Okay. Uh, I received a $5 tip. From an anonymous tipper, says, I just watched the Starfield presentation. It was happening while I was doing this podcast. In my opinion, it looks like another generic Bethesda RPG. There you go. Well, uh, I'm gonna look. At, I'm gonna watch it tonight. I think I, I only saw like a half an hour of the Xbox presentation. I may see tonight. If my wife wants to watch it, 
<clears throat> and we'll watch it together, and then we'll probably watch the 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 Starfield thing together, and that way I'll I've watched it and I'll, I'll be able to talk about it in a you know reactions video I'll make later this week for DSP React. Uh, I'll let you know my opinions. I I personally don't want to give an opinion until I see it. So, but uh, there you go. I received a two dollar tip from Anso Kamaru. So I think you're way too jaded. Back in the day, games were similar too, but small things were different here and there. You had 10,000 platformers, but a lot of them were fantastic because they didn't what they did well. If a game's too different, people ignore it, yourself included. There's nothing wrong with games being similar if they do enough different to be great. There are three anime JRPGs, but they're all unique with their own properties. There's nothing wrong with that. There were fantastic games shown. Everyone has their own opinion. I'm not saying you're wrong, but I think you're being overly negative. See, you're actually talking about way before I am. I'm talking about the era of like when I started on YouTube into, let's say, the first five years I was a YouTuber. So let's say 2018 to, like, 2013. 2018. Let's try that again. 2008 through, like, 2013, 2014-ish. I feel like there was a hell of a lot more innovation in gaming back then. There were new styles of games. There was first-time opportunity for a game to have, um, like, a tie-in. Like, for example, if you remember... They were just like, oh, the first time that this major game is getting a license or is being done seriously. Remember Batman Arkham Asylum? How everyone freaked out. Oh my god, it's the first really serious Batman game that is true to the character, right? Now it's kind of like, I feel like we've done that too and now there's no more innovation even in that regard. Like what first time intellectual property can be made into a video game that hasn't really been done yet, right? I feel like a lot of things that were innovative, they can't even be innovative anymore or... Maybe we're just not trying hard enough because we're so easily falling into the same archetypes, you know? I hear what you're saying, though, but you're talking about a different era. Like, you're talking about classic games. You're right, because classic games did the same thing in the 80s. Classic games started off innovative, and then you're absolutely right. By the mid to late 80s into the early 90s, they became jaded, and the same game pushed out a million times. Then what happened? New consoles came out. You had the Genesis, you had the Super Nintendo, <clears throat> and you had, uh, you know, the, what was it, TurboGrafx-16, and then, right after that, PS1 and N64. And what happened in that time period? Huge innovation. Games that dramatically improved, tried new things. Why? Because the technology pushed it to that point. But now, where's the technology going? We can't even get the games to run at a solid 60 frames per second on the consoles we have. So how can we push technology further, right? It seems like we've plateaued with, with innovation and technology and everything. We're just, we hit a plateau and we can't get any further in a direction for advancement, right? <clears throat> okay. I received a dollar and one cent tip from Pizza Turtle. Try not to get too stressed. Remember, your schedule is arbitrary. Most of your watchers don't care if you break your schedule. Uh, actually, I disagree there. I actually think that people do get upset if I break my schedule. On a day when, when I, I was supposed to be here and I'm not, people do get upset. I mean, they understand, but <clears throat> I'm, I'm a rarity when it comes to content creation and the fact that I have a set schedule that is consistent and I'm here 99% of the time. You know when Phil says he's going to be here for a gameplay stream, he's likely going to be here unless there really is something going on that there's a, a major reason I can't be. And this year there's been a couple situations that happened and that kind of sucked, right? But <clears throat> but I'm, I'm consistent. I put out content on a regular basis. You cannot say that I'm a wishy-washy guy who's undepend undependable, right? You can't. I'm here all the time, right? So I don't know about that. What I will, will say is it's good that we can adjust the schedule on the fly, correct? <clears throat> okay, Um, I got another dollar tip here. If new games are bad, play older ones or indie games. Don't chase day one views. But again, you have to understand something. It's not about chasing day one views. It doesn't even matter to me the amount of views I get on a launch day of any game. I, I, that's not, it's not about that anymore. It used to be about views and ad revenue. It's not anymore. I don't, I don't care about the overall views I'm getting on anything. <clears throat> I care about a game that's going to engage my audience, get people coming back to the streams, and overall enjoying it enough that now they want to reciprocate and say, I love the content Phil's putting out. Let me support it. That's what, what this is all about. Right? It's getting that cycle of quality content, enjoyable to the audience. They enjoy it. They support it. Right? But the question is, what what is that? And, and whenever I skip a major release, I get told, man, you really goofed. You skipped that major release and everyone wanted to see it and you didn't play it. Right? Or, oh, you goofed because you're taking too long to play that major release. If I just sat around playing indie games all day, 
people would, would complain and say you're playing the wrong games. You know, it, it's it when you're a variety content creator, there really is no answer. There is no right way. There is just finding a way to maintain and understanding you can't please everyone all the time. There's no way. There's people who want more indie games. There's people who want more of a certain genre of game. There's people right now who wish I would drop everything and just play Street Fighter. At the same time, there's people right now who would wish I would drop everything and just keep playing Zelda and beat it in two weeks. <clears throat> but you can't please everyone. Let me turn off my fan because I turned on my air conditioner now. Oh. 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 oh man. Oh. Alright, what time is it? I'm trying to see how much time we have left. Because obviously I don't want to go super late because we do have to jump into a new character today. In uh, in Street Fighter 6. So you can't be going super lengthy with, when, uh, when that's the case. Right? Okay. Let's uh, let's unplug. Oh, I have a super chat to shout out, but let's unplug for the gaming. So let's see what people want to talk about for like ten minutes, and then we'll end the show. So we'll we'll do a little bit of, you know, variety here. Okay. The guy show D Low did a super chat saying first to ten money match with side scrollers. What? First to ten money match with side scrollers. First of all, I gotta make a lot of assumptions here. If you're seeing a first to ten money match, I assume you're probably talking about Street Fighter, and I assume you would be talking about Street Fighter Six, the latest one. I mean, you didn't even really say that, but I assume that's what you're saying. When you say side scrollers, you realize that's 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 more than one person, right? <laughs> I assume again, I have to make another assumption. I assume you're saying Stuttering Craig, but do any of the side scrollers even play Street Fighter? Right? Like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> now, now let's be really honest here. Alright? Let's really be honest here about this. After all the stuff that's happened since March, with me and side scrollers, right? Does it really make sense to possibly want to have any other interaction with them? Do you really think that that really is the best thing for me and my community? Honestly, you know seems to me that every time that my name comes up in the conversation with side scrollers all it is is toxic shit against me and my community like people in my community have outright said just stop because even if you are in the right it doesn't matter because we all get pulled into the drama like what Let, let's realistically and I'm making a lot of assumptions here because I don't even know that's what you're saying but let's hypothetically say you're saying I should do a first to ten money match with Craig from Side Scrollers in Street Fighter Six. Okay, what exactly would be the benefit of doing this event? Okay, he's not a Street Fighter player. It doesn't mean anything if I beat him, right? At all, it means absolutely nothing. All right, my viewers don't care about it at all. My viewers don't care about me seeing me play a non Street Fighter player in Street Fighter, right? Who cares? And all this does is this would create benefit for side scrollers because it would give them something else to talk about regarding me by the way again writing my coattails getting content out of me milking content out of internet drama correct am i correct that's what it would be it it would be one million percent benefit on their side because now they can talk about it they can hype it up oh my god will he will Craig stand a chance against Phil? Will he even win a round? Or will he actually surprise everyone and dominate or whatever, right? Build up drama or whatever. But who on earth from my side of the, 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 the perspective would give two shits about that? These guys have already absolutely positively milked every drop of attention, money that they could get out of the one interview I gave them, right? They have for three months milked the shit out of it. So what makes you think I want to give them anything else. Exa Here you go. Charles said exactly right. They're just going to get thousands of dollars or more Super Chats from your haters. Exactly right. Why the fuck would I do that? 
I'm not going to be getting that. I'm not going to be getting any giant benefit out of it whatsoever. There's nothing on my end of personal benefit here. All this would be doing is taking time away from me putting out meaningful content for my audience that wants me to continue to play the games I'm playing. Why would I give two shits about that, right? <clears throat> so there you go. Okay. So by the way, I guess the answer would be no, but I don't even know what you're talking about because this is the first time anyone said anything like that, but that's why I'm not doing nonsense like that. Like, what would be the point of that, right? Okay. All right. Uh, there's another tip. No, it's not. I'm just ignoring this person. <laughs> there you go. Ignore the nonsense. Okay. So, anything last second you guys want to talk about? I played both of those South Park games, Juan. Yes, I did. What PJs am I rocking today? I'm once again wearing the Breath of the Wild PJ pants today. There you go. So, anyone who says I'm not a fan of Zelda because I get hit by lightning... And I complain about it. Yeah, well, do you have Breath of the Wild pants? <laughs> Take that. <clears throat> Carliga says there's a troll adoring fan in Starfield just like Oblivion. That's disturbing. What's going on, uh, Vorkushi? How are you today? No, we're not playing Arkham Knight today, Arkham. Sorry. Kuma Bear says do a tier list about beverages because it's summer and it could be refreshing. You know, that would make sense. We could do a... A frosty beverages tier list. Refreshing beverages. We'd have to find out if there is one to use, but that could be cool. Oh, yeah. Easy Mode said there's going to be an all new one terabyte Series S console, likely because they think that you won't even be able to fit Starfield onto the Series S. Are you serious? That would suck. Imagine if. You have an Xbox Series S and you can't play Starfield because it won't fit on the console. You're forced to buy an expansion hard drive or you got to buy a new console. That'd be fucked up. I hope not because my wife wants to play Starfield. It's on Game Pass. And what if it doesn't fit on her hard drive? That would be really fucked up. I mean, that would be a huge problem for Microsoft. Can you imagine? Oh, by the way, you have to buy a ton of extra shit just to play this one game because we fucked up and made it too big. That would be a huge problem. Man, I hope that's not the case. That would be a disaster, I feel, actually. No, I never heard of Fallout the Frontiers. I don't know what that is. No, I did not see a Persona 3 remake trailer. When did, when did that drop? I didn't see that. I saw the Persona 5 Tactics. That was that was part of the presentation I saw this morning. And I was like, meh. Random Ron says, thoughts on Street Fighter 6 music so far? Meh. Honestly, I think the music is one of the weakest parts of the game. I feel like they went for this certain style of music that sadly, it's modern, but it's not notable. When you hear those classic Street Fighter themes, they are notable. When you listen to this new soundtrack, everything sounds like generic music made on a computer. It doesn't feel like anything stands out as special or, or iconic. And that's sad. I think they went for a more modern take and it doesn't work. Street Fighter's been lit, I agree. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't know if there is a PS5 Pro coming out, Canadian uh, Kirk. The I don't think it's PS5 Pro. I think it's PS5 Slim. I think it's going to be a, a slimmer version that doesn't have the, the disk drive, and you have the option of buying an optional disk drive later. That way they can only, they'll only produce one model, and it's easier for them. You know what's funny? Sa Sa Sage Lazen, Sage Lazen one says, "Are you liking Diablo Four so far? And does it remind you remind you more of Diablo Two or Diablo Three? I'm I'm serious about this. 
I just I don't remember Diablo 3 it was so unnotable super boring of a game to me that I don't remember it I, I completely I, I, it's like I don't remember playing it at all I just remember I didn't really enjoy it when I played it Diablo 4 I'm, I'm actually having a good time with so far but Diablo 3 I just I can't even re remember anything about it <laughs> it's, it's pretty bad no <clears throat> Oh, uh, let's see. I got another dollar tip from Jameer. It says, do you feel Dalsim being played the least is the reason why Dalsim players rank number one in online play? Maybe. Maybe maybe it's that he's insanely high difficulty to play, high execution. <clears throat> but he's he's good. But people just don't want to put that level of, of mastery into the game this early on. And so, therefore, you have someone who did master the character and no, people just don't know how to handle it. So he's the best in the game, right? <clears throat> Definitely could be. <clears throat> oh, man. Eternal Leibon says, I never played an ARPG before, but your Diablo 4 gameplay led me to, do to download Path of Exiles. Well, there you go. That's, everyone says Path of Exiles was the game in the time frame when Diablo wasn't prominent, that kind of picked up the reins and was a really good game. <clears throat> no, I've never tried drinking straight gravy. What kind of a question is that? Oh. Oh. <clears throat> wow. Garrett says that he's been playing World Tour Mode and Street Fighter 6. It really does feel like Yakuza, and it's quite fun. Well, we're trying it tomorrow. Tomorrow, World Tour Mode premieres. We give it a shot. No, Canadian Kirk, I'm not watching any of those new movies this month. I don't, I don't go to the movies. I don't have time. That's really what it is. It's a time thing for me. It's not even a money thing. It's a time thing. I don't have time to go to the movies. I, mean, I have one day off a week. That day is so busy. This week coming up, from what I'm going to understand, we have like at, at least two appointments, if not more, coming up that we have to do all in one day, plus all our regular er errands. We just don't have time for anything, right? <clears throat> A nose job? No, I have not had a nose job. If anything, my nose is getting worse. It's getting larger and more bulbous as I get older. Look at that. How could that be a nose job, right? It's uglier. The nose is getting uglier and worse as I get older. How could that be a nose job? <clears throat> it's the opposite of the point of a nose job. The nose job is supposed to make the nose look better. <laughs> True. The older you get, the bigger your nose and ears get. By the time I'm, you know, 60, my ears will be like the size of stop signs. I'll be able to flap them and take off. And my nose is going to be like, you ever seen Gonzo? Well, imagine if Gonzo's nose had a nose. That's what my nose is going to look like. <clears throat> Chrome Abyss, we have this membership for four months. He says, ASMR stream when? Never. We're never doing ASMR here on DSP Gaming because it's too dangerous. Too many people would not be able to control themselves if I did ASMR. <clears throat> there you go. Jade, what's going on? How are you today, Jade? How is the weather today? It's cool outside, but it was over 80 degrees in here, so I had to turn on the air conditioner again. This is what happens this time of year. It gets so stuffy in here with all this electronics. I have to start turning on the AC. There's just no way around it. <clears throat> yes, I've seen the four Indiana Jones movies. The first three are amazingly great, and the fourth one is shit. It's a big crystallized turd. <clears throat> All right, guys, I think it's time to end the show, shall we? Let's wrap it up. Thank you for watching, <clears throat> as always. And I know I did not 
live react to the Microsoft and Starfield shindig. I will watch those and get caught up and give you my thoughts later this week on DSP Reacts. I'll probably do a video that'll wrap up like all my thoughts on the Microsoft stuff, the Starfield stuff. I think Capcom and Ubisoft are either tomorrow, Tuesday, or both, right? So I'll wait for that stuff to happen and then I'll I'll probably do something all cumulative together so you know my overall thoughts on everything. That way it covers everything, okay? <clears throat> all right, guys, thank you so much. Thanks for watching the Level 1 Podcast. I hope you found some value in today's show. The old man screaming at the clouds or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> thank you and I'll see you later.